Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Today, I would like to set myself the challenge of actually launching a rocket into orbit using the linear RCS thruster. Now, in older versions of Kerbal Space Program, this was eminently possible. In the older versions, the part was physicsless, which meant that you could have a million of them and it would not affect your mass of your spacecraft. So you could get essentially infinite thrust to weight ratio. Also, there were previously other bugs and the specific impulse did not change with altitude, whereas nowadays it goes as low as 100 at, at sea level, which is basically really, really, really terrible. So here's an example rocket sitting on the pad. You can see that the thrusters are going to get 101 specific impulse uh, at sea level. And also when this thing launches, you'll see that first stage there burning fuel really, really quickly, presumably because it has some sort of lumpy skin condition. That's why we get rid of it and leave the rest of the rocket with its own version of the lumpy skin condition. Now we are accelerating very rapidly. Because, to be honest, uh, we don't, we're having to deal with gravity losses as well as the horrific inefficiency of this engine. But as we get up and up and up, our specific impulse is rising. For this final stage, you're noticing that I don't have enough uh, thrust to weight ratio to actually accelerate initially and my velocity dropped. But as I got higher, the specific impulse went up and I'm starting to pick up speed again. Now that's probably not an ideal design for something designed to go straight up, but it could be okay for something trying to get to orbit. Uh, we're accelerating the uh, time at four times normal speed, and when we reach burnout we're going at over a kilometer per second. If we go out to the map you can see that uh, the spacecraft got out to just over 100 kilometers. So that's me getting to space with this simple design. All we need to do is scale it up and we should be able to take the whole thing to orbit, right? So here's an example. It's about 1700 parts. And when loaded, well, when it eventually loads, it gives me a frame rate of about one frame per second. The big problem is loading. It literally takes about 10 to 15 minutes to load this thing. And when I hit space and those launch clamps detach, the process just hangs around for another five minutes while it reorganizes its internal data to create the two different spacecraft. <laughs> this thing, uh, it does accelerate just fine, but all those ro all those engines, all those engines are just really putting a huge strain on the whole system. Luckily for you, I can, of course, accelerate this in post-production. The first stage there, when I hit that space bar, again, it just went away for like five minutes. It was a good thing to have a phone sitting around so you can actually do something while the staging has happened. Note that the first two stages happened at two seconds and four seconds, and we barely got up to 60 meters per second. That is just how fast this thing burns fuel getting upwards. We're already on to the, the third stage has gone. And uh, yeah, we've barely made it up to half of the speed of sound and maybe just over a thousand meters here. We're about to stage for the fourth stage. And there we go. Now we're down to, we have two stages left. We are about 200 meters per second, two kilometers up and going as fast as this thing will let me. Now, the one upside to all this is that the game doesn't actually check for exhaust occlusion, which means that you can stack those little engines on top of each other, and it doesn't matter that the exhaust, the thrust from one, is passing through another object. It doesn't care. It just gives you that power and lets you use it in whatever way you can. Final stage there, does this have enough to get to orbit? It almost certainly does not. All in all, this entire process took well over an hour of micromanagement. It was painful in so many ways. Even after I had ditched those stages and they had moved beyond physics range, the game just didn't want to return to reasonable frame rates. It was kind of stuck at around uh, one frame per second. So it took very long time to do anything here. And this wasn't even successful. If we need to scale this up another a bit more, 
What are we going to do? We're going to have another stage with double the number of engines that burns for another two seconds. Does that really make the difference? Well, maybe it does, but there's a better way for us to improve our performance. Now, if I take that spacecraft that I previously tested with, and we just take it onto some launch clamps and lift it all the way up to the very top, as high as the game will let me, we should get slightly better performance. You see, if you remember, at sea level we get 100 seconds of specific impulse. In that first test, we got 101 because we were at 69 meters. Well, I've moved the spacecraft up to 150 meters and now we've got 102%. So that is really only like 1% difference, but will it really make a big difference to the altitude? Well, I bet you it will. So using exactly the same launch profile as before, we can we see how well this works. 1% difference. Well, the thing is 1% adds up. It compounds on top of itself. It doesn't add up. It multiplies. Right? That 1% improvement means that we get to our first uh, stage with higher velocity, which means we the further stages get even better performance. And you can tell that the third stage recovered much faster than in the previous version. But yeah, I mean, look, we're heading up above uh, about 100, about 40 kilometers and the altitude, 119. We basically got 20 extra kilometers just by moving the spacecraft from 69 meters to 150 meters. So the question is, how high can we build things inside the vehicle assembly building? Now, the important thing is here that I'm doing this entirely stock. I could use a hangar extender. I could edit the .craft file, but that would be cheating. I want something that is accessible to everyone, including those players on the consoles. Now, one thing, you can't just grab this using the shift key and drag it off the top. It won't let you do that. But what you can do is you can change the root object. The limitation is the root object has to sit inside the hangar. So what we could do is add a new root object, say down here, and we'll put like a probodobodine on here. Now how I make this the root object is I reroute it, click on that and that, and now I can drag the whole thing upwards and get some extra height. And that's great. Can even go a little higher there and just leave it there. That's great. And the other thing you can do is it doesn't need to be a probe body or anything, but the other important thing is that the whatever is the lowest object on your model, if it happens to be underground when the model is loaded, it will reframe the model to make sure that object is above ground. So that's actually kind of important because we don't want to have these being the, the root object. Otherwise, it will mess up our staging and that can be big and problematic. You know, you gotta check your staging even with this. So there we go, it's just off the top and I can't quite get to it. Here, let me do a reroute here. Click on this and then reroute to that and I can bring it down now within reach. So I can bring this back into it and I've got a platform that I can work from and I can tell it to make sure that this uh, pro body is my default object. And now when I launch, the game magically makes sure that my uh, lowest object is above the ground and pushes the top of the spacecraft up another 60 meters or so. Now that certainly makes a small difference to the performance and we will no doubt expect a higher altitude out of this thing assuming I fly it with roughly the same flight profile and it represents something that is absolutely legal and available in the game. You don't need to resort to save file editing to get this up there. It's hardly an expert worthy of Tony Pro, but it is going to give me a couple of extra kilometers. So how far can we push this? Well... The answer is that yes, you can easily make things that are several kilometers tall, but it really comes down to the luck of the draw when it loads as to whether it decides to go and embrace the Kraken. Yes, the good old Kraken there, always making sure that we can't push the limits of physics a little uh, too far, let's say. Oh yeah, there we go. Boy. <laughs> I like that. Yeah.
But yeah, eventually, if you tweak enough things, the Kraken stays away for long enough for the model to load, and you can, of course, then quick save it and get ready for a very carefully uh, planned launch. So here we go, we have a specific impulse of 156.9 from here. And I can't actually see where it is because you have to adjust your camera to the model. And initially the model includes that ginormous launch clamp setup. It's really a race against the camera as to whether it can focus in on your spacecraft before you need to ditch the first stage. But there we go, first stage goes. I have to make a hard turn right away as well. Now, if you remember, I put a lot of, I gave this a very high thrust to weight ratio because part of the understanding is that this thing really needs to get up quickly because it's fighting against uh, gravity efficiency losses. It can't afford to spend any time in the lower atmosphere. So that's the second stage gone and we're almost over at a 60 degree arc here. Really want to turn this hard but not too hard. The surface speed is over Mach 1 now. Altitude 7 kilometers. This may just do it. So I'm hoping this is going to work. <laughs> There, you got to remember, this is 100% stock. There is no cheating in this. There is no mods. The only uh, trick that I used was this uh, changing the route so I can slide the you know, slide the launch clamps up to ridiculous heights. And beyond that, yeah, we're now heading towards space. So let's see what our altitude is. Just had to pause the thrust for but a second, and we're gonna peak out at 33 kilometers hopefully that will we're going to bring that up above the atmosphere and then we'll cut our thrust until we actually hit the peak there so yeah this is a long way from the glory days of the tony probe exploit that was where the reaction control thrusters had their uh, thrust adjusted so that the torque was constant that meant that if you moved the thing the thruster very close to the center of the mass of the object your thrust would be practically infinite and the fuel consumption would remain constant. So I literally built a probe which was uh, an RCS tank. It had a single uh, RCS thruster, uh, a solar panel and a probe body and that was able to visit every single planet. But this, this is now visiting space. The question is, do I have enough Delta V to actually carry me into orbit? This is going to be close, I'm going to say, because <laughs> this has been a lot of experimenting to get this far. The giant rocket thing just wasn't going to work. I mean, literally my computer at one point practically, and my computer crashed because I was running your know, three, 4,000 part ships that would take you know, 20 plus minutes to just load on the pad and staging was painful. This is a smaller rocket. Granted, I'm using a little bit of trickery to make sure the, the thing works a little better, but it is. The only engines on this are the RCS thrusters. Those linear RCS thrusters don't even start on the multi-directional RCS thrusters. Those are they're great for multi-direction, but they're lower efficiency, they're lower, um, l higher mass, and uh, lower thrust. Okay, getting close here. Getting close, I'm going to start firing this engine at uh, T-11. 14, 13, 12, go! Go on, ya beauty. Get into orbit there. You will be the true, uh, the claimer, I don't know, the true claimant to the throne of Tony. Tony Probe Reborn in not quite as awesome style. 75 kilometers later. Okay, we're going to zoom out. We're going to wait. Oh, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are in orbit and we have a tiny bit of mono propellant left. We made it. We made it. So that is it. It is possible with stock hardware to get an RCS thruster only spacecraft into orbit. And now, back to my regular programming of, you know, sensible spacecraft. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.